Welcome to Mafia 2. You play as Vito, a lovable Italian guy whose family moved to America to find new opportunities. Like being forced to fight in World War II because a certain angry German man wasn't a big fan of diversity. The war was tough on little Vito, although he did make a few great memories. Like here when I burst into an office and saved these two innocent Sicilian locals from certain peril. Sure, they were mowed down moments later by an MG42, but it's still a great story for the grandkids. I found myself pinned down as I tried to fend off wave after wave of infantry, but then this mafia boss rocks up in a tank and he's like, everybody chill. It's at this moment we realize how powerful the mafia is. They really did have a huge influence on the Italian campaign. It's quite fascinating, but we're not here to learn. I take a cab back to my family home and it's good to be back on American soil. As I'm walking back, everyone remembers me, even this little baddie. You look so handsome in that uniform. When Vito checked the weather, he saw that it was heavily snowing, not raining gilfs. I head inside and on my way up, this cat leaps up onto the windowsill, hisses and then jumps out and splatters onto the pavement. This man managed to avoid PTSD all the way up to his front doorstep but fell at the final hurdle. My family's happy to see me. They've been busy living in what is probably the third biggest apartment in New York City. They've got a nice aspect of a literal pile of coal, no shower anywhere to be seen. The trenches had better amenities than this place. I wake up in the middle of the night in a sweaty panic, probably because of the cat. In the morning, I head out and see that my sister is being hassled by a thug. I handle the situation responsibly by relentlessly beating the man until he submits. Vito also throws out a little red hot banter to put him off his game. You hit like my sister. That one seemed a little tactless as my sister is literally right there watching the fight. Now free to explore the open world, I do the basics. I eat the finest foods, I beat up those most vulnerable, and then I head over to my best mate Joe's place. Vito and him have been close friends since childhood. I don't know what it is with this game and having fine little mamazitos everywhere. This is Joe, and today he wants to introduce me to his line of work. First I take the liberty of giving myself a tour of his apartment. There's a red bra on the bed, indicating either premarital relations or that Joe likes to play dress up. Either way, I'm half-masked. Like the video if you're at half mast. We head outside and I insist on driving despite Joe's concerns that Vito has never driven before. He was right to be concerned as I forgot the Mafia games have simulation driving mechanics and I immediately crash into a taxi. The police get involved and I have to pay a ticket. I can't imagine this first impression is instilling confidence in Joe's plan to bring Vito into the Mafia. We start with some small time jobs as a test for Vito, like stealing this car. Joe then even pays for all the upgrades on my new whip, Nothing like some fresh white wall tires to celebrate the liberation of Europe. As we're driving to our next job, something comes over me and I veer off the road onto the sidewalk and just bulldoze everyone. Surprisingly, the police don't show up, which is strange. Their response time to a minor taxi accident earlier was near instant, but when 11 people get splattered, it's break time. We arrive at the next job and Joe is like, see ya bro, you got this. What a great friend. I'm here to steal a car from a gang and as I hop over the fence, one of them assaults me. He knows how to throw down, which I respect, but I just pull out a gun and fill him with lead. Loads of his mates come out and start shooting at me. It's not ideal. Fortunately, I'm a literal war veteran with aim assist, so it's them who should be scared. I steal the vehicle and pretty badly damage it on the drive back because I dared to dream. Luckily, the guy we sold it to isn't very good at appraising the condition of cars. Mm, nice. No stains. Clean. All in all, a pretty successful first day on the job. As we pull into Joe's place, he says I can stay with him, which is really nice because Vito would rather land on the beaches of Sicily again than spend another night in his family's miserable apartment. It's so depressing over there. His sister is in heavy debt and his mum's about to die. It's all about them. I sink a few beers from the fridge and then call it a day. I wake up from my classy kitchen couch bed to the phone ringing. It's my mum and she says I need to get a job. God forbid she gets a job. She really lacks empathy, but at least she's organized an interview for me at the docks and so I put on my finest tuxedo and roll out. As I leave, I walk past the cleaning lady who is on her hands and knees scrubbing the doormat. I'm no expert, but that's not how you wash doormats. I turn off the light to save power because she's being inefficient anyway, plus if the mafia doesn't save the planet, who will? I steal one of Joe's nicer cars and drive down to the docks. Vito's dad used to work at the docks, but he recently died. Still no excuse for not being there to welcome home his little boy. I walk up the stairs and this guy tells me to go and load the crates. It's not much, but it's honest work. I just load the crates of whiskey into this truck. I was down to fill up the entire thing, but then Vito quits on me. I don't need this chicken shit money. I walk back up the stairs and ask for a promotion and I get it. I'm now in charge of collecting everyone's barbershop money. 
There's not really a barber shop though, they're just running a protection racket on their own workers. That can't be good for staff morale. Sometimes they don't want to pay, so I just refer them to human resources where they can go and speak with a senior manager and ensure their voice is heard. The boss is very happy with my efforts and I earn $100. I know Vito isn't even in a mafia family yet, but I decide to treat myself to a new suit. I've said it before, but Italian gangsters are the only people who can wear fedoras and still have women be physically attracted to them. Take Chris Hemsworth for example, and then put a fedora on him. He looks like he's about to play the flute or something. Now that Vito has proved himself on the biggest stage, Joe introduces him to a powerful player, Henry. He gives me the details of my job and then tells me to leave as he and Joe have business to discuss. I stand there for ages and they don't say another word. Liar liar pants on fire. The plan is to steal stamps from the government. Especially back then, but even now apparently, postage stamp stealing is a real thing and you can make good money. First I need to pick up this randy gal called Maria who's going to show me how to break into the post office. For the video I wanted a cool shot of me sliding into a car park, but I slightly miscalculated the angles and I end up viciously killing a gangster. This leads to a broad daylight shootout with bodies piling up and even the police getting involved. To make matters worse, Henry asked me to keep it quiet, but on the positive side, you just know there's a dump truck hiding under Maria's brown pleated box skirt. She's surprisingly quick on her feet too, which is great as the situation is pretty hostile. I buy a new suit and steal a fresh car to get the police off our trail. I then drive her to hospital so she can visit her sick sister. She doesn't even throw me a tenner for petrol money. I sneak around the back of the post office, but the door is locked. Fortunately, the bathroom window is wide open. Thank you, IBS. There's a few guards patrolling the corridors, but I just use Vito's signature hand-free force chokehold to strangle them to death. I open the safe and there's the precious cargo. I then drive around the city selling stamps to gas stations in my painfully slow car that I stole. Heist complete and most importantly, Henry now trusts us. He tells us of an even bigger job. We're going to pretend to be telephone operators and rob a jewelry store. We've got our little orange suits on and everything. I really don't see why we need them, they just make us more visible at night. We're just breaking into the side door like normal crooks. At least when we get caught we're already in prison jumpsuits I guess. I feel the pretending to be telephone operators part of this mission was completely unnecessary. The cops show up and we have to escape. So here we are running through the mall in a glorified onesie and Boost Juice isn't even open. Vito can't treat himself to a watermelon crush. It goes bad and I'm forced to take down a lot of cops. Joe and I split up and I run towards the parking lot in a hope of escaping and then suddenly there she is. Shaniqua's grandma, Crystal. If this is the first video of mine you're watching, I have this truck that looks almost the same in GTA and I called it Shaniqua. I have no idea why. I drive back to Joe's place and decide to play a tasteful Christian prank on him because he just ditched me. I go and turn all the taps on his house on to run up his water bill. Vito really is becoming part of the mafia now, this is just malicious. I head out the front door and see a woman getting rear-ended by some guy. I am wearing my fedora and so it would be rude not to channel my inner reddit moderator and run over and help the damsel in distress. They're having a heated argument and so I pull out my 1911 and shoot him in the head. This is great as now she doesn't have to deal with her bumper being dented, just the memory of a man being gunned down in cold blood right in front of her. Her bumper is also still dented I guess, but we've got bigger fish to fry. Henry wants help assassinating someone and he's got a genius plan. He has me drive to the bad side of town to pick something up. I get two speeding tickets on the way. It would genuinely be so immersive if our feet weren't sinking into the road. I buy an MG42 from this war veteran and load it into the truck. A surprising amount of this game is just carrying crates around. I also buy a shotgun off him because I'm obviously going to buy a shotgun off him. When driving home I get pulled over yet again. The officer carries on for a minute and then I do the brave and noble thing. I shoot the man in the back when he has no possible hope of returning fire. Honestly Henry could take notes from this little trick as his idea of a sneaky assassination is just me blasting everyone with an MG42 from a window. This is the loudest and most aggressive assassination attempt I've ever witnessed. Our target somehow notices the light machine gun fire and cars exploding and hides inside the factory. I for the life of me don't know how this plan didn't work. God forbid we subtly poison his fettuccine or gently remind him that Italy didn't qualify for the World Cup again so that he necks himself. That's not racially insensitive as I have Italian blood in me. Not through genetics, I just sometimes inject it straight into my veins. Joe, Henry and I finally find the target. Henry gets a little romantic with it which costs him as he gets shot. 
A man just did the equivalent of default dancing on his opponent before he was actually dead. Joe carries him out, which is worrying because that can't be good for my boy's back. I take point covering them, but it's mostly just workers burning helplessly. The game doesn't even let you target civilians, not even out of mercy, so I just have to watch them scream. Pretty hot. We rush the big bleeding unit to a secret mafia hospital, and that's that. It's pretty worrying because Henry was my main employer. Fortunately, I don't have to worry for too long, as I get arrested the next day. Was it for shooting police officers? Was it for vehicular manslaughter? Stealing cars? Hate crimes? No, it was for stealing those postage stamps. People really need their Christmas cards. I lose my trial and get sent to prison with a cute little 10 year sentence. The game goes first person for a moment and I get to live the experience of having the various prison gangs hurl abuse at me. It's actually really sweet that they all gathered like this to welcome us. First impression, prison doesn't seem that bad. There is corporal punishment, which is an ideal, although it's hard to argue with its disciplinary effectiveness. I also score a free haircut, which is a nice little perk that I don't hear too many ex-cons being grateful for. I get shown to my cell, and again, it's pretty spacious and objectively better than where my mother and sister live. I proceed to lie down and get a good eight hours sleep. My first day in the yard, and I want to try and find the other Italians so I don't get shanked. The good news is people are surprisingly hospitable. Buzz off, asshole. Go bother somebody else. Get the f away from me. The trick to becoming respected in prison is to fight the biggest guy in the yard. The biggest guy in the yard immediately picks a fight with me. There are two simple tricks that help you win a fight. One, always fight people smaller than you, and if possible, a lot younger. I wouldn't fight anyone older than about 13 years old. Two, tell your opponent no weapons, and then bring a weapon. Unfortunately, Vito failed both rules, but we still held our own and earned some respect. In fact, I quickly became the Italian clique's main fighter. I was scrapping in the underground prison fight club, and I was laying people out like they were picnic rugs, or something more scary sounding. It wasn't all fun and games, however, as my job was to clean the bathrooms. I paid money for this game, and now I'm scrubbing urinals in a prison toilet. It's beautiful. I then go to take a shower in my underwear, because apparently this is a Christian prison. This dude then pays the guards to leave, and tries to bone me. Vito didn't even get to properly exfoliate his skin, what an inconvenience. I proceed to beat him senseless. Six years later, and I'm a free man. Joe pulls some strings to shorten the sentence, but the world has changed. We're no longer in an ice age, or what New Yorkers call winter. It's a new world and new mafia families have risen to the top. I meet up with Joe, who's wearing a brave red Hawaiian shirt. We all need a homie like Joe. He has a gift for me, and so we drive up the street and this dodgy malacca has got me my very own apartment. It's actually a nice place too, what a king. The real estate agent gives me a tour, especially focusing on the bed. It's comfy, with room enough for two, maybe three. I'm loving this game, so drop a like if you'd like to see a part two. Also follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all that. I love you.